recognizes the representative from Brooksville, Representative Chapman. Thank you, Madam Speaker, friends and colleagues of the House. Uh, we've heard that this $45 million tax break at the rate of $3 million per year, will, it provides a good investment for the people of the state of Maine. We've also heard that it is not an investment because it doesn't provide a return on that investment. We've heard that this tax break would help uh, the employment situation at the Bath Iron Works, which is owned by General Dynamics. And we've also heard that it will not affect the employment at Bath Iron Works. We've heard that this tax break will help capital improvements at the shipyard and we've also heard that it will not help capital improvements at the shipyard. And finally, we've heard that this tax break to General Dynamics will make the shipyard more competitive. And we've also heard that it will not make it more competitive. So I say, Madam Speaker, we have two sets of stories which are mutually incompatible. Our job as legislator legislators is to determine which of these stories is false, since they both cannot be true. Fortunately, Madam Speaker, we have tools available to us to uh, figure out which set of stories is false. The representative will defer. It must be spring fever or something. but. Uh, I think as I look around the chamber, I, I notice uh, that there are groups of people who are speaking and probably don't realize that there are many groups of people who are speaking, which means it's very loud in here. It's really difficult to hear people speak. I know that every one of you wants to have the attention of fellow members when you speak and to not be interrupted. So I ask that you please refrain from conversations in the chamber. If I have to keep asking, I will have in individuals um, individually asked to leave the chamber for their conversations. The representative may proceed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I was saying that we fortunately have the tools available to us to discern which set of stories is false. And that set of tools is called arithmetic. And to illustrate that, I need to tell a very short story. Madam Speaker, I drive a 19-year-old automobile. And in its own language, it tells me that it's getting tired of driving back and forth to Augusta. So I went to a new car dealership the other day and was looking at a car when the salesperson came up to me and said, you know, sir, for just a $300 a month payment, you can be driving that new car. And I said, well, you know, I'm a state representative and my salary averaged over the years about $1,000 a month. And so that new car payment represents about 30% of my salary. The way I figured that out, Madam Speaker, is I divided the $300 per month payment by the $1,000 a month salary and then I multiplied by 100 to express it as a percent. I'm gonna do the same thing in just a moment because the salesperson then said something very strange to me. He said, well, Representative Chapman, by that time he, the salesperson had seen the name tag on my coat, said, do you live in a town that has litter on the street, on, on, along the roadway? I thought this a strange question. I said, yeah, I suppose I see litter occasionally on, in, in my town. And the uh, salesperson said, well, do you think you could find uh, one returnable can or bottle every month um, along the side of the road? And I acknowledged I probably could, and what did that have to do with the new car? He, salesperson said, good news, Mr. Chapman, you can afford the new car. And I said, well, excuse me, but exactly how do you figure that? And the salesperson said, well, uh, you're a legislator, and so you're considering the $3 million a year tax break to uh, General Dynamics, which is a $31 billion a year revenue company. And so if you divide the, th the uh, $3 million by the $31 billion revenues, you see that it represents 
uh, about one hundredth of one percent of their revenues represented by the tax break. And I'm pretty good with figures, so I acknowledge, yes, they had done the division correctly. And the salesperson said, so, you see, one returnable bottle per month is a larger percentage of your monthly payment for the new car than the tax break for General Dynamics. And I had to admit that, yes, as a matter of fact, if the five cent returnable fee from the bottler can represented more than one hundredth of one percent of the cost of the new car. So, you see, by using arithmetic, we see that the effect that the tax break for general dynamics that we're considering here has as much effect on their employment decisions, their capital investments, and their competitiveness as one returnable bottle per month has on my ability to buy a new car. Now, it's a matter of opinion as to whether that uh, makes a big difference or is negligible. But it raises another question, Madam Speaker. How is it that someone would tell us that such, that one hundredth of one percent of their revenues would make a difference? How is it possible that someone would, would come to that conclusion? And again, I appeal to arithmetic. Uh, newspapers reported a certain Lobbyists was paid $16,000 in a year, and if that lobbyist spent that entire $16,000 lobbying fees on this issue, uh, and the return for that would be a $45 million tax break, we can take the $16,000 divided by the $45 million and find out that that's about four one-hundredths of 1% uh, uh, expenditure in order to get the tax break. So that got me thinking, Madam Speaker, maybe I could do the same thing. Uh, now, I have a neighbor. Now, the neighbor's elderly and on a fixed income and in poor health, but I could go to my neighbor and say, neighbor, uh, uh, please give me $100. And the neighbor probably would invite me in and put on the coffee, and I might have to take an hour to try to explain why the neighbor should give me $100. Uh, but then, you see, as a legislator, when I figure out the hourly pay that I receive, it, not counting constituent time and only when we're in session, it comes to about $15 an hour. So if I spent an hour with my neighbor talking them into giving me $100, I would have spent $15 or 15 percent of what I would get. And that uh, doesn't seem like a very good, good payoff, especially since the neighbor would probably say no. So, I, I thought about this and said, well, what if I had the ability to be able to spend only a couple hundredths of one percent of time in getting $100 from my neighbor? And I calculated that out. Uh, it comes to, if I, if I could leave my home, run to the neighbors, get the $100, get back to my house, and do that in six seconds or less, then I would have spent in salary time uh, about the same amount as in this case. And uh, one sees that, that that would actually make a pretty good payoff. So the real question is, would I, if I had the ability to talk my neighbor into giving me $100 by spending six seconds, would I do that? And of course, the answer is no, I wouldn't. So I, I pose the last question, which is, what is the difference between me and General Dynamics? After all, legally, we're both persons under the law. On the other hand, I'm a human person, and I feel shame. And I would be ashamed to ask my neighbor for $100, even if I could do that in less than six seconds. General Dynamics is an institution. It feels no, no emotion. So, in summary, Madam Speaker, we have a shameless request for one hundredth of one percent of the operating revenues of General Dynamics to be paid through this tax break from the taxpayers of the state of Maine that will have an effect 
on general dynamics great, uh, not as great as the effect of my finding one returnable bottle or can per month in order to buy a new car. Now, in closing, Madam Speaker, I want to thank the elementary school teachers of our state, each and every one of them, for giving our children the tools that they will need as they grow into adulthood to be able to separate fact from fiction. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The chair recognizes the representative from Bath.